Well, guys, I want to welcome you to Overtime, where we take Sunday's message further and deeper. And we are in part two of the series called Hope for the Holidays. And this last week, I, I talked about this idea that uh, we can relate to God as an Abba Father. And uh, the implication of the Christmas story, I shared an incredible story of Mick and Tracy Hooper, who are just remarkable people, their radical love. And, you know, at the end, I just said, hey, I think one of the greatest gifts we could give ourselves if you're a follower of Jesus is to remind yourself that you don't have to relate to God as a transaction, you don't have to relate to God as a judge, but that God is truly your Heavenly Father. You can relate to Him as an Abba, as a dad, as a Papa. And then I said, and if you're not a follower of Jesus, I think one of the greatest Christmas gifts you could give yourself is to actually make that transition of trust from yourself to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. So we talked about all of that. There's so many different pieces of Sunday's message. And so today I want to go further with that. And I'm excited to have a conversation with my friend, Adam Ulitowski. Did I say that right? You nailed it. Yep. Did I really? Yeah. And I felt pretty good then. Yeah. You know, my last name, Giebelhaus, you know, Ulitowski. These yeah. are some difficult last names. Yeah, they're long, too. Yeah. What is the origin of that? Polish. Polish. Yeah. Okay. Have you studied that before? Have you gone back and like, hey, here's the Polish thing? Um, not too much. I know at one point it had a W in there that got uh, got taken out. Yeah. So, you know, and I, I think it was Olatowski is how it was said in Poland. But okay. Yeah. I can, I don't know. I don't know which one's easier, but. Yeah. <laughs> I like Ulatowski. That sounds like, yeah, like, here we go. <laughs> Anyways, that's not why I asked you to come here to talk about our last names. But, man, thank you for hanging out and just having this discussion. Uh, happy to be here. Yeah. So I know you a little bit, and uh, we've had some conversations about life and family and God and, you know, football and that whole thing. But if you could just share a little bit about, like, who are you, maybe your family, you know, how'd you come to North Point? Sure. That kind of stuff. Yeah, so um – I'm married to my wife, Emily, and we have two boys, uh, Evan and Daniel. They're, uh, one will be a five in February and six, and they are uh, pretty crazy. Um, yes. Five and six? They will, he will be five in a couple of months and okay. six, yeah. Are you guys sleeping at all at night? Yeah, it's better. Yeah. It's better. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> um, two kiddos? Yeah. Um, so I came to Austin. I... I Went to school at Texas, played football there, and then uh, we never left. And my wife, she was a teacher up at Parkside, mm -hmm. um, where North Point first started. And then after we had the boys, um, we wanted to kind of raise them in church. And so we started you know, coming here. And um, you know, she was obviously familiar with North Point because of that. Um, mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of people from Parkside that, that attend here as well. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's kind of how we got here. Now, where did you meet Emily? Uh, I met her in college, uh, okay. my my freshman year. So, uh, so she's a UT grad as well. She is as well. Yeah. This is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, let's just rest in this moment. <laughs> UT right here. Go Horns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could we, we could, could use, use some, some of that. I know, actually. I know. Yeah. I feel that with you. <laughs> um, yeah. So actually, it's uh, I was a I had a gray shirt year for football and a red shirt year. So I was a red shirt freshman and then she was a senior. So I always like to. Oh, wow. But year wise, age wise, we're a year apart. But okay. I like to tease her that she's yeah. a senior dating a freshman. That so. sounds like a massive span. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So she got you. Yeah. You got her. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So I, I know like one of the fun things, you know, that uh, getting to know you, there's been a lot of really cool things in terms of who you are and your experience and journey with God. And uh, but also, you know, we've talked about football a little bit. And so I know you played for UT, mm -hmm. and uh, I think, uh, like, your, your, w when did you go? What were your years at UT? I was there from 2005 to 2009. Okay. Um, yeah, so. It's like 15 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> I didn't mean to remind you yeah, that way. Like, yeah. oh, that was 15 years ago. <laughs> well, I, I think of it as, you know, kids that are going to high school right now, they haven't, they haven't seen really Texas at to where Texas should be. It's I know. Still, it's a little disappointing. But So you were part of um, the glory days, you know, back then? I, I was a part of it, yeah. I was I was fortunate. So. Mm -hmm. What was, uh, you were t there in 2000 what? So my red shirt year was 2005. Okay. When, when was Vince? Vince was, his last year was 2005. So okay. So that, that was my, my red shirt year. 
And then the next. Is that the year that, I mean, incredible yep. championship, all that kind of stuff? Yep. yep. Okay. And then the next four years, I was Colts right tackle for two years and then his left tackle for two years. Okay. Now, what's the difference between a right tackle and a left tackle in terms of like, is like, man, right tackle's good, but left tackle, man, you're really important. Um, the biggest thing is it's the blind side. So, mm. you know, the quarterback can't really see anybody coming um mm -hmm. so there's a little bit more pressure there as far as pass protection is concerned and and so um that's the biggest deal yeah you know so yeah i mean that's also why they usually put the less experienced people on the right and then you know transition on the left or something like that so. interesting wow is that so for left-handed quarterback does that change yeah okay yeah and then the right tackle's like man that's the blind side you got to put your more experienced people there yeah i think once you kind of get to higher levels, it's a little bit harder for like guys to switch because you're switching basically everything, your stances, your steps, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I don't know how they do that. That's I'm interesting. I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. Wow. But yeah. All right. Yeah. So you you were there in like the coolest days, um, and <laughs> it's been over a decade since that's happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm just so curious, like, and we were talking about this before the podcast, but like running out. Rose Bowl moment, national championship game. I mean, I don't know if you – did you think about, man, millions of people are watching this. Did that thought cross your mind at all? Not really. You're just like, man, we got to go execute. Uh, yeah, you're, you're so focused on what you have to do. Yeah. Um, which is – it's – you know, people always would tell you, you know, try to enjoy the moment, try to enjoy the moment. Yeah. I was never in the moment <laughs> when I was playing football. It was always yeah. about what is the next thing I have to do. Um, right. You know, I, the one thing I will say that that was kind of unique for the national championship game yeah. was usually in college, um, you're in the locker room for the national anthem. Mm. Um, and this was this is not a political thing. It was way sure. before all that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But it was. Um, but for the national championship game, you're actually out there. And so, you know, we were out there for the national anthem. And then we had the, you know, the stealth bombers flying over and everything. And that is one thing I do really remember um that i think partly because we're never out there for it and yeah so i know it's happened before you know at dkr and things like that but we actually right. got to see it on the field that and great. that was and those things are so loud <laughs> they're really loud yeah. and so like popped you out of the moment and mm -hmm. in terms of like i gotta go execute and you're like watching that going wow yeah that yeah. was one of those like oh that was really cool that is awesome and then back to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and do you ever, like, when you're standing there, do you look up at the crowd and go, man, national championship game, like, this could be one of the biggest moments of my life right here. And you're, like, looking at it and just trying to, like, <gasps> you know, breathe that moment. Or is it like that happened, boom, you just go right back to, okay, now here's what I got to do and we're got to get ready. You know, I wish I did. Yeah. I wish I did, but I, I really didn't. It yeah. was, you know, beforehand, you know, you'd get some, you know, worries and anxieties about it but yeah. once you got there and really once you know a lot of people tell you once you kind of get the first hit in yeah um your focus completely switches to that yeah um, where uh, i don't know if with golf if that's like once you actually kind of yeah tee, tee off, off the first hole you know, you're like okay now, yeah. now i'm going yeah so mm -hmm. I, yeah, it's kind of like that like once you're actually in the game mm -hmm. um you're just so laser focused on it that it's yeah. You know, a lot of the things that people would think is distracting, you don't even realize is going on. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Now, who's the craziest guy you ever played against? Like, you're I, sitting there, first hit, you're like, goodness, this dude is like, yikes, I'm nervous now. <laughs> Do you ever um, have that? I'll say the best player I ever went against was actually on my own team. Was oh, really? Brian Iraq, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was really good. Um I mean, I went against some some pretty good guys. Um, you know, I went against like Gerald McCoy and then Dominican yeah. Sue and. What oh, makes oh Dominican Sue so like? I mean, is it more reputation? Right, uh, that guy just seems like oh my gosh! Like, so <laughs> I only went against him about three snaps because he's defensive tackle and I'm yeah. So, um, and you know, uh, on the outside, it's a little bit different than you know when he's going. But I mean. I know there was one point uh, against the Nebraska game that we had one of our, our guys, and um, he was he had everything done perfectly. He had he had his arms locked out. He had everything, <laughs> and he just reached over our, our guard and grabbed Colt and like threw him down. And it's like, 
No, no. He what went, do you do? He went to the sideline, and our coach didn't have anything to do. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> right, I don't just, know. Keep trying. Yeah. I, you know, so I, it's one of those things when, when he turns it on, it's almost like he's a superhuman type yeah. thing. So, Gosh. Uh, yeah. Well, that's cool, man. Those are those have got to be like fun memories. Every now and then, can you reminisce in that? Like, you know, fifteen years later, is there? Or do you have some moments where you're like driving, and you know, one day, or maybe sitting in your living room, you're like, "Man, that was pretty cool," and like can soak that in a little bit, or is that like, ah, those were college days? You know, it's. <laughs> I don't completely honest, and I think a lot of it is because what we were talking about before is mm-hmm. I was very rarely ever in the moment. Mm-hmm. You know, when when I was playing, it was all about. You know, it was very little about enjoying the journey and more about the destination. And, yeah. um, you know, uh, that's, I guess, something I probably regret is I wish mm. I did spend more time doing that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I think the best part is, that I think about is, is all the people that mm. I met. And there were a lot of great people that I got to get to know. And, um, you know, so that was that's my favorite memory of everything. That's cool. Yeah. And then you went and pursued the NFL a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> kind of yeah. slash you know yeah yeah that yeah. direction uh, that, i i played in the nfl only f- uh, as a technicality okay <laughs> not, not an actuality <laughs> uh i i uh i signed a free agency contract and i was with the texans for a short time yeah. um and then i decided i didn't really want to play anymore mm-hmm. um and the chargers actually called me up after that and i had basically i had decided i didn't want to play anymore yeah so. wow yeah. That's amazing. So I, I would imagine, I mean, you know, playing in the glory days, and I really hope they come back to UT. I don't know what's going on. There's some funk, but I hope they come back. But, you know, all the, you know, football experience you had, you know, going to the NFL, you know, even on a technicality, I mean, just to be in the presence of, you know, that kind of coaching and those kind of guys and that kind of like, you know, there's so much determination and so much work ethic and so many lessons you've learned. So I'm curious back on that I've learned in my football career that I apply like just to everyday life, maybe marriage or parenting or work or just everyday life. Yeah. yeah I think that's, you know, that's one of the best things about football where some of the lessons that you learn that I think is really, they're, they're difficult to come by in just everyday life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one I think is the, the team aspect of it. Mm. Um, I think that, you know, I'm a little biased here, but I think sure. that, I think that football is is by far the greatest team sport because there there's no Michael Jordan taking over the game. Right. You need to depend on other people in mm-hmm. order to achieve that. And you know, and, and listen, I know Vince was a big deal of winning the game, but yeah, people forget how many balls David Thomas caught and all the blocking that the old line did and right. you know, everything else and the defense getting a stop on the fourth and one. And I mean. It, it really, it takes everybody, yeah. um, you know, and, and you could have the greatest quarterback in the world, but if the offensive line doesn't block for him, it mm-hmm. doesn't matter, uh, right. you know. Um, so I think, I think just from that perspective, the, the having to rely on other people um, mm-hmm. and, and how you then turn that into an actual team mm. um, is, is one of the best lessons. Um, the other one is, you know, you, you don't let one mistake turn into two. Mm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, as, as we were talking about it, 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 in pass protection or blindside, I mean, if you, you're you going to give up a sack eventually. Mm-hmm. At some time over your career, you're going to. And mm-hmm. you can't let that turn into two. You can't stay down in that. You have to then refocus, figure out what went wrong, and, and fix it and go on to the next one. And so I think, um, you know, it, it helps you kind of learn from failure, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, so, you know, I think there's a a lot of Mm. things that I got from it. That's fantastic. Have you seen, um, as you were saying, don't let it turn into two. There's a show on Apple TV. It's the guy who's a soccer coach. (laughs) What's that called? I don't know. I've seen previews for it. What's it called? Julie? Lasso. Ted Lasso. Have you watched that? I haven't watched it, but it looks pretty funny. Yeah, Yeah. well, there's a line in there, and there's some, like, great, great things in it, but there's a line in the Ted Lasso show. That he says you got to become like a goldfish, and apparently goldfish have like the shortest memory of all time. So it's like ah, uh, you know, I don't know what you do in a goldfish bowl that you're like, ooh, messed up here. You yeah, know, I swam left. I should have gone right. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But it's it, you know his lesson was you know you got to be like a goldfish. Which when you said that, 
you know, I think there's such valuable lessons in our mistakes. Mm -hmm. There's so many things we learn in life, which we don't want to make mistakes, but if you don't learn, you know, make mistakes, you don't learn. And, you know, if you don't become like a goldfish to go, oh my gosh, maybe there's value in that. You know, maybe there's something I can learn. You've got to, you know, don't, don't take a sack twice or, you know, don't give up the blind side twice. I mean, you know, I, I love that. So be a goldfish and your statement, what'd you say again? How'd you say? Don't, don't let one mistake turn into two. Yeah. 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 That's a great lesson. Yeah. It's a great lesson. Awesome. So I would love to talk about football like all day long and be like, hey, what's up with the Cowboys? <laughs> and what's up with, you know, and how about Tom Brady and, you know, Tampa Bay? What do you think of that guy? But, uh, but we are, you know, talking a little bit about Sunday's message. So sure. I'm just going to transition real quick over okay. there. Very good. So Sunday I was talking about, you know, the Christmas story and the significance of it beyond like the idea of like all these little trinkets in your yard and, you know, lights and all those are wonderful. And I think that's a, you know, fun time of year to go. And, you know, my neighborhood down like towards the end, it's, mm, yeah, uh, it's right. yeah, what's it called? Warnock. 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 Yeah. yeah. It's crazy what it's people really cool. do. Yeah. And it's like, you know, every home's like the Griswold home <laughs> and it's really cool. And I love that about Christmas, but the real historical significance is God sent Jesus Christ into the world. And he did that so we could have peace with God, so we could be forgiven, so that God's justice could be satisfied, you know, through the sacrifice of Christ, so that we could stand before God and know that we could experience his mercy, know that our eternity is secure. And then, you know, I went on on Sunday's message and to say, not only that, because that feels transactional, that feels like judicial, but then to move to a place to go, the ultimate reason why he came is so that we could relate to God as Abba Father. And that word is an Aramaic word. Abba means like dad or papa. Like it's that rich and that relational. And as uncomfortable as it may make people feel, like that's the outcome. So Jesus came to go, man, I want you to know God. And I want you to have such a intimate relationship with God that I'm willing to give my life so you could be forgiven. And then take steps and grow to a place to have that kind of relationship, which is really cool. So that's what Paul was talking about. And I know just on our conversations and even the story, you did a video one time about the story of sitting in North Point, hearing us go, hey, our mission is to lead people in a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And you're like, oh, what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's the point of that? Like, and so it's been really um, fun to hear how God has worked in your life. And one thing led to another. And that decision that you made to go, hey, I'm going in. I'm putting my trust in Christ. Um, I'm really curious if, uh, you know, to talk about that, to, you know, if you would be willing to like sure. say, hey, what did that look like for you? And, you know, what led to taking that step to put your faith in Christ? Yeah, I, I think um, probably need to take a little step back and, and kind of go through my my understanding of what Christianity was beforehand. Mm -hmm. Because I, I was raised in the church and, um, you know, I, I like to say that what I heard, because I don't really know what was said, but mm -hmm. what I heard was, you know, I basically, I have to perform and, and earn my salvation. And uh, God was judge, jury, executioner, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, all those things. And, and a relationship with God was not something that I had ever really pursued or even knew was <laughs> something that you could pursue. Right. Um, and, and so it, and when I started hearing that at first, <laughs> at first I, what I thought was, oh, it's just kind of a fancy way of saying they're going to try to convert people to Christianity, <laughs> you know, and, and that's what yeah. I thought. And mm -hmm. um, it's because it was a brand new concept. And so when I, um, I kept coming back and, um, and started to really kind of get a better understanding of what that really meant. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, one thing that I, I remember thinking back is I would always see people with this just, you know, great faith uh, in God and, and just everything, you know, that you would want in a relationship with mm. God. And, and But I didn't know that's what it was. Mm. And, and I would see it as like, man, I wish I had that. Mm -hmm. I don't have it, mm. you know. And, and I thought it was just one of those, you have it or you don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and you know, I, I don't know why, but it was always just this thought. It's like, well, you either you, you get it or you don't, and mm -hmm. I guess I don't got it. Um, and, and I never really thought, well, me, what have you actually done to try to get it? Mm. <laughs> that was it's a great thought. The answer yeah. was really nothing. You know, mm -hmm. I hadn't, and I don't know why I thought that was different than virtually everything else in this world. Mm -hmm. um, but in my experience, it's not. You know, mm -hmm. it's 
it is what you, you know, your priorities are where you put your time. And I didn't put any time into it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and one of the things I did, I went to starting point and, um, you know, there, the, there were a lot of, uh, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself here, but, no, yeah. um, you know, there were a lot of questions as to what that really meant. And, and it was, it was, it kind of flipped everything that I thought on its head, you mm -hmm. know, where it was just, this isn't what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it, it, and it really changed everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, or. well, absolutely. Well, what I love is the idea to go, you know, they're, they're, uh, I was talking to an individual the other day and they were talking about, you know, how do people get to the point or, or, you know, one of the things that bothered them, they said like, when people say, oh, I just trust God, you know, I just trust God. Like in the ups and downs of life, like you hear somebody who says there's a Jesus or a Jesus follower and they're like, my, I just trust God and I trust God's work in all things for the good. And you hear that and you're like, are you, are you kidding me? That's a little bit ridiculous. Or, you know, like you were saying, you hear people go, you know, have this, just say, Hey, I have this faith. I have this relationship with God. Like, you know, I relate to him as Abba, like as my dad, as a perfect dad. And you're like, ah, that just sounds so far fetched. It sounds like odd. That's weird. I guess you have it. And I don't, or I guess if you can say, Hey, God works all things for the good. I'm not that intellectually like, you know, dishonest. It feels like to say that. And what the challenge is with that is those are outcomes. So it's like if somebody watches you on the football field and in your college days in your prime time and goes like, oh, you know, look at that. You know, I guess I just some people have it. Some people don't. What you would say is, man, back up five years. Like I, I, I didn't know half the stuff I knew. Now back up another five years and another five years. Like it required an enormous amount of work, intentionality, discovery. Like you had to have some sort of an appetite, a curiosity mm -hmm. to go discover like, hey, you know, where do I put my feet and how do I put my hands and what, what happens in this scenario? And, and then eventually, you know, obviously some biology helps with that. Um, and, uh, but eventually it led you to a point to be on a national championship field. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing is, perhaps true, um, I would say would be true, is when somebody goes, man, I really trust that God is working all things for the good. That statement in itself can feel pretty shallow, but oftentimes it's what's behind that. It's the years and years and oftentimes decades and decades and decades of pursuing the questions they have, being intellectually honest, and then getting to the place to go, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. I think I do trust God. And it's getting to the place to go, and I can relate to God as a heavenly father, but that's not overnight. That requires a lot of it, you know, um, just again, curiosity, a lot of questions, a lot of probing, a lot of going, no, I don't believe this. And, you know, and challenging and being in connection and your story, you know, I know that's part of it is yeah. that you go to starting point, which hopefully, you know, we try to create that as the safest place to be honest, to be intellectually honest, to go, what are your scientific questions? What are your, you know, church questions? What are your questions about history? And to be able to ask those, and I know part of your story is you started asking and started researching, and I even know you read, you know, uh, Tim Keller's book, mm -hmm. The Reason for God, and that mm -hmm. was part of, you know, that was another one of those things to go like, you know, are you going to read the book or not? Because do you want to know the answer or not? And <laughs> do you want to grow or not? It's like one of those things It really is kind of that. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll be completely honest. Mm -hmm. I bought the book, and then I listened to it. Oh. <laughs> So I technically didn't read it, but okay. I, I, I yeah. have gone back and read sure. through it some. But yeah, uh, I think I think there were a lot of doubts, and you mm -hmm. know, you, you go to if you go to college without a real foundation of faith, mm -hmm. uh, I think that there, you're going to have a lot of doubts thrown at you. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't have a place to really. I, I don't know. I thought maybe it wasn't appropriate to ask those questions, or sure. that it was like if if there was somebody. Because there were guys on our team that had great faith. Mm -hmm. and, and, and frankly, you know, at the time, I didn't really know it, but they, they kept me engaged enough mm. to where I was, you know, kind of willing to come back. Um, uh, but, you know, I think maybe it was, I thought it was disrespectful to ask them some of the questions I had doubts on, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but, um, you know, I had doubts and le legitimate doubts. I mean, mm -hmm. questions, not, not trying to, you know, belittle or anything. It was, I, I don't know. And I don't, and if I don't, if I can't get over this, if it doesn't make sense, um, then it just can't be true. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's where I was. There was a lot of those things. And, um, yeah, so starting point, it, it provided a place where we can ask those questions, real mm -hmm. questions. Um, you know, one thing that, that you had said a long time ago, a couple of years ago, I think was, you know, 
you know, growing up, we had kind of storybook questions and we got storybook answers. And mm-hmm. then when we grew up, we had real questions and we still got storybook answers. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, but that was a place where you could go for real questions. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I think that doubts aren't necessarily a bad thing because if you just ignore them, mm-hmm. um, I think eventually they're going to come back up again and it, it, it's explore them, mm-hmm. um, try to understand and, and, and put the work in. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, yeah. And as you were talking it, um, I met with a individual a couple of weeks ago and we were sitting down and she had the same thing. Like, is it okay to ask these questions? And, and just by her asking that, I was like, where'd you get that? Like this idea to go, it wouldn't be okay. I'm going, you know, the safest place to ask all questions should be the church. And so, you know, she was talking about the same kind of thing that she's got doubts and she's been through hardships and difficulties. And, you know, she was sharing about, you know, that uh, somebody she loved, uh, you know, passed away unexpectedly and at the, you know, a terrible time. It's like in the prime of their life, like why, why? And, you know, one of the things I was able to talk about is even in the scriptures, you know, the guys who like were with Jesus. So you think of John the Baptist. I mean, the guy baptized Jesus. That's that's pretty impressive. And then, you know, things get difficult. Now he's in prison and he probably knew, hey, my days are numbered, like literally like a couple days. And all of a sudden, you know, his humanity creeps in. And even though John the Baptist was given the very spirit of God in the womb of Elizabeth, like he still had doubts even though he baptized Jesus, was with Jesus, saw that miraculous moment, he still had doubts. And he's like, Sin, he sent his disciples and said, can you just talk to Jesus one more time? Just ask him a few questions. I just need to know he really is. And then think of Thomas. I mean, Thomas is like, you know, doubting Thomas. Jesus, are you sure? Analytical Thomas, like, really? Hey, come here. Let me see those marks. You know, did, are you the one who died on the cross? Because this is really hard for me to believe a resurrected Jesus. Yeah. And... I really hope that your story, and I hope the stories in the scriptures, and I hope just this conversation can lead folks who are listening to go, you know what, I'm going to ask my question. I'm going to be courageous enough to take a step and not feel, you know, shame or not feel foolish or not feel smart enough or not feel like, uh, you know, inferior. I think it's such a position of strength and uh, to be able to go like, hey, I got honest questions. Here they are. Yeah. So, and I love that you did that. Yeah. I'm glad there was a place to do it. Yeah. You know, and I think that the the atmosphere there, it's welcoming to that Um, Mm. because I I don't, I don't think even if in big church, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a a place real conducive to that, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's not, it's nothing wrong with that. It's just a a separate environment for it uh, Mm -hmm. where. Yeah. Well, on Sunday, um, so I talked about this idea of uh, what Paul talked about. So it's really Paul's idea, not my idea. But Paul was saying, hey, you know, Jesus came in. Christmas story is all about the idea that we can have peace with God. Like Jesus was both the just and the justifier. So, you know, he paid for our sins. He lived the perfect life. He was the perfect sacrifice to satisfy the perfect justice of God for your sin, for my sin. And that's that's awesome. I mean, that's really good news. But I think oftentimes for, you know, especially people who've grown up in church, or maybe, you know, you're just, maybe you, you would be new to church. You're like, okay, that's great. But that feels so transactional. It feels so much like, you know, courtroom and judge and jury and, okay, God, you know, I'm forgiven. I'm not going to hell. You know, it's all good to go. And then it's like, I'm going to live my life now. Right. You know, and Paul said, no, 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 it, it, you know, that's almost like a warm up act. And then he goes on to say, hey, as a result of your faith in Jesus, you are adopted as a son, as a daughter of God. And that's a huge deal because now you have the right to be a child of God. Now you are a new creation. Now you have a new identity in Christ. And he's like, man, that's awesome. And then he takes it one step further and he goes, and you can approach God and relate to God as an Abba Father. And on Sunday I talked about that word and you know I said that word is just such a unique word because there was no like Greek equivalent and he was originally writing a Greek and so he had to pull this Aramaic word because he knew it fit the context better and it was much more intimate, much more relational, which is like for us to think of God as like dad mm-hmm. or us to think of God like papa, like you can relate to him that way is like, okay, that freaks me out a little bit. So why do you think like that's just difficult for us to – get to that place with God to go, yes, he is God, but yes, he's also through Christ invited me to relate to him as Abba Father. Uh, 
I think that we try to apply what we know mm-hmm. and what we know is this world. And so it's like going up to the CEO of the company and being like, what's up, dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's like, a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, and I, I think that, um, you know, we, we uh, I think there's almost this, um, I don't know, maybe it's similar to the reason that we're afraid to ask questions is mm-hmm. like there's this level of respect that we think, oh, I don't want to, you know, go too far with this. I don't mm-hmm. want to, you know, uh, offend anybody or, or anything like that. And I think that that might be part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say for me personally, though, w- once I became a father, mm-hmm. um, it helped me kind of put some things in perspective mm-hmm. when you think of god as your father and, mm-hmm. and truly as your father i mean there's so many times uh where i dealing with my my boys <laughs> and i and just like you you know they think they know everything mm-hmm. and, and they can't understand why we would have them do x y or z mm-hmm. um and, and, and it's they're like, five I, and yeah. they're like i have the world figured out dad yeah, leave yeah. Me alone. And, and so you know i'm like well if i kind of move things forward a little bit and God yeah. is omnipotent, then maybe there's something I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe, mm-hmm. maybe I haven't experienced life enough yet, mm-hmm. or, or maybe I haven't experienced it after that. Uh, you know, so I think there, that, that helps me, um, where, you know, it, it also helps me r- reconcile things that maybe I think aren't fair because mm. I don't know how many times I hear it's not fair at home as well. It's like, mm-hmm. but it is so. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, that that's helped me a lot. Yeah, I've read so many uh, different like theologians and you know biographies that talk about that inflection point of having kids. It's like my relationship with God was this way, but then I had kids, and I began to understand theology. I began to understand God like at a different level, and it's like that was a you know a pivot point for people to go, wow, you know it. And uh, to understand that, I think, you know, for me, I I would say one of the things, and I don't know for you, but I think to relate to God that way is something that I haven't personally tasted or experienced. And as you were saying, in this kind of, you know, finite uh, world. And so my, my relationship with my dad like wasn't close to that. I mean, I, I, there were maybe moments and I longed for that, that kind of connection. I longed for that kind of intimacy with my father. Um, but I, I didn't get to experience that. And then, you know, for me, one of the challenges is, and then when I hear Paul's or, you know, read Paul's words about this idea that you can relate to God in this very intimate and really, you know, relational way, I'm going, ah, I don't even know what that looks like. Um, you know, that's hard for me. That's hard for me to even comprehend or get my mind around or get my heart around. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's one of the things I love about Christianity and I love about the, the letters in the Bible is on a lot of these things, it's stretching you. It's mm-hmm. saying this is before, this is something that potentially could, you could step into, you could lean. It's like this, you know, the old church word is, you know, the sanctification process. It's like there is something sanctifying. There's something that is being shaped and formed and molded you know, that God has put out there to say, here's what I desire for you. Here's where I'm leading you to something far better, but it's hard because, you know, sometimes when you don't, don't experience those kind of relationships, it's like God, dad, papa, mm, it's tough. Yeah. No, I think, I guess I, I, again, I go back to my kids and there's times where I'm Mm. just like, just trust me. I love you. You Mm -hmm. don't, you don't feel it right now, but I do. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, I want them to come and talk to me and I want them to, you know, figure things out with me and, and all those mm-hmm. kind of things. And then I, then what I try to do, you know, mm-hmm. not very good at it, but I try is yeah. then, you know, kind of put myself in the position of my kids and be like, okay, well, if this is what it's like, then maybe I need to do my part as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So you've experienced a lot in life. Um, you've been on uh, some highs of highs in football um, and, uh, and, and have seen stealth fighters in the Rose Bowl, which, I mean, just mark that as a moment. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and, so, and you've been honest with your faith and, you know, intellectually honest with your faith. And, and I love that. And I love that curiosity. And I love that idea to go, hey, 
you know, just because I don't understand it doesn't mean I'm going to reject it and make fun of it and make fun of people who believe it. I'm going to actually ask questions about it. And that's on the other side of you what I've seen. And so I would imagine there are some folks that are listening or folks that, that are watching who may um, uh, be in the place that uh, of questions, maybe in the place of m- maybe not wanting to ask questions or maybe in the place of doubts or maybe in the place of going, this idea of, you know, really being forgiven and having peace before God, knowing I have meaning and purpose and knowing my eternity is secure and knowing that I can relate to God. I mean, that's just, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So somebody's there and, and saying that's kind of where I'm at if they just being honest, what would you say? Like, is there anything you would encourage them with? Is there anything you would just say, man, here's what I want you to think about? Um, it's a tough question, and I don't necessarily feel uh, in this fight. Adam, <laughs> it's your time to speak. <laughs> um, you know, I would just, I guess, encourage you to earnestly seek it and and do that with a, a curious but open mind mm-hmm. um and, and you know it is something that it's it's not just it doesn't just happen mm-hmm. you know at least in my experience mm-hmm. um you know you, you you ask the questions do the work put ask the questions that you want research the questions there's tons of resources out there that, mm-hmm. that you can that look at and and see if that makes sense to you um mm-hmm. you know and, and uh, for me, part of um, part of it was also humbling myself mm-hmm. and not uh, not feeling like I knew everything, and mm-hmm. that if if I couldn't explain it, then it's not true mm-hmm. uh, because you know there's a lot of things that I believe that I can't explain how they work, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm not talking about God, you know, <laughs> just things right. in the world, everyday I mean, life, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I, I think it's 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 a little bit of, of humbling yourself, earnestly seeking. I believe that if you are, if you look for Him, He's waiting for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to, you have to take the first step. Wow. Um, and um, you know, I know there's lots of things that we do here at the church. There's mm-hmm. places that you can ask questions, like starting point. Um, you know, the book uh, a reason for god by tim keller that mm-hmm. that did that helped me a lot it's um, a great book and he he just he goes through a lot of the you know, a lot of the the doubts that that we think we have mm-hmm. are unique are not very unique mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah they're, they're very common among a lot of people and there's good reasons um reasons for the doubts and there's good reason or there's good responses to those too mm-hmm. and um so I, I think the hard part for some people is that um they also have to maybe admit they were wrong. Mm. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if you've gone through life for a while, just not believing any of the, there's no way that can be true. Um, that's why I think humbling yourself and, and, and recognizing I could have been wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, if you're not, then you're just wasting your time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. That's so good. Yeah. And I love that. And here's the beauty. It's like, if you go like, Hey, I may be wrong. That's really hard to admit. Um, I, you know, I'm not a woman. I'm a dude, and as a dude, I know a lot of other dudes that, you know, being able to kind of humble yourself in that way and just go, okay, there may be something I don't know, and I could be wrong. But what I love is what you're going to find on the other side of that is grace. Mm -hmm. You're going to find on the other side of that is forgiveness. You're going to find on the other side of that a Heavenly Father who empathizes with you and can meet you in those moments. And, you know, I love in Hebrews it says, man, Jesus you know, came into this world. He experienced the hardships and difficulties. And it's not like we have a God who cannot empathize with us. Like, he knows what we're going through. And so my hope is, as, you know, if the individual's listening and, and tuning in, that if there's a willingness to do what you're saying, my hope is that, you know, we all discover that God yeah. and discover a God who really loves us and has invited us to relate to him as an Abba Father. That'd yeah. be a really cool thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, thanks so much for being part of, you know, overtime and uh, spending your time here sure. and, uh, you know, sharing about your football days and just your story and your, you know, face story. It's, it's awesome. And really appreciate your friendship and just appreciate your vulnerability to, to share your story here. Of course. All right, man. Thanks Thank so you. much.